big Luca. <laughs> Time see it, I know, man. and you're still big. <laughs> How are you, buddy? That doesn't change. <laughs> How's it going, man? Good, very good. Welcome to Dave Fisher's Powerhouse, man. That's nice. It's good to have you. I know this is all new. Have you? Did, were no, you here I, when I you? See you didn't see that? It's nice, huh? They did a good job. Yes, you can hug me. Nice to see you, bro. Oh, you too. I big bear. <laughs> Whatever, man. <laughs> We're yeah, so glad yeah. to see you. Thanks for coming. Thank you guys That's for awesome. Me. Oh, yeah. How great is it to see this guy? Uh, dude, I <laughs> I really miss Luke. We've been staying in touch through text. Oh, you have? Okay. And we've been basically like crying to each other like, yeah. I miss you, dude. I miss you, dude. Life is so miserable. Big blubbery yeah, <laughs> bodybuilders. Two, two big guys, you know, whatever, having a bromance. Uh, you know, awesome. I really miss I'm so happy that he's here today. I'm so psyched that we're going to get to do this. Yes. <laughs> it's gonna be I know. I'm fun. happy too. What are we training, uh, Luca, today? Uh, we're doing shoulders, right? Doing shoulders. shoulders. Yeah, I got something special planned today. Yeah? Something special. Something. Uh, I'm going to use a technique today that it's something that I've uh, talked about in articles okay. and online, but that I've never done on Be Built by Bros. Oh. So I'm going to do it for the first time today. It's called add-on sets. Okay. And we're going to do that today, and it should be some fun. Something different. All right, cool. So let's let's do the training, and then we want to catch up with you afterwards. Absolutely. All right. All right. Cool. Let's get in there. Okay, so this technique that we're doing today is called add-on sets. And what I need to know from you, because this will be how I base the exercises, what of the three delt heads is the one that you want to work on the most that you feel you need the most work on? I like to focus on my rear delts. On the rear delts? Okay, so that's gonna that's gonna help me determine the sequence of exercises. So it's very important to know what you're focusing on, what head of the muscle when you do this technique. Okay, because he wants to do rear delts, we're gonna start off with a rear delt movement. This is uh, bent standing uh, rear laterals, as you can see. He has his head resting on a pad, which makes it even more strict of a movement. He's focusing on rear delts. He's doing a very, very strict movement, slight bend in the elbows, right. and he's using the rear delts to lift them out to the sides. And he's not going, he doesn't go too high to affect the traps. Okay, so again, we're starting off the second sequence with again, the rear laterals, same movement as you can see. He does it very, very strictly. There's no body swing. Slight bend in the elbows, and he's just lifting with the rear delts. He's not going too high again, which will affect mostly middle back. Okay, now the second movement in the sequence, this is the add-on. This is why I call him add-on sets. He's moving into a side lateral now. He's going to do them very, very strictly with his back up against the machine. And again, slight bend in the elbow. As you can see, there's no body swing. He's just using the lateral deltoid now to bring the weights out to the side, right out to his sides, not to the front. And this is a very, very tough sequence, as you can see. This was a superset. This was the first sequence of add-on sets. Okay, here's the third sequence now of add-on sets. Again, we start with the rear delts, rear laterals. Again, he's staying with the same weight, same technique. He's gonna take it to failure. There you go, he's just lifting with those rear delts, slight bend of the elbows, goes to failure. Next exercise is gonna be the side laterals again which is his second pick for what head he wants to work on most. Again, very, very strict form. His back up is against the machine, so there's no body swing. And again, you can see this very slight bend in his elbows. He's not doing the technique where he's swinging with arms bent. This is really, really focusing just on the lateral delt because his arms are moving straight out to the sides and they're not in front of him when he starts the movement. Now, again, this is add-on set. So now we add on the next set or the next exercise so we're going to go to a seated shoulder press. We're going to use a machine today. So this becomes a tricep. Okay, so we're using a seated press machine. This way he doesn't have to balance the weight. The shoulders are already pretty exhausted. And he's just moving it down and up. Again, as you can see, Luca uses a very good controlled form. He's not throwing the weight. He's muscling the weight. He's focusing on squeezing the delts. I like this machine because the, uh, the arms of the machine come together at the top, which gives a good contraction. So again, that was another add-on set, now a tricep. Yep. Okay, so now we're going to the final sequence. This is gonna be a giant set, but again, we start with the rear laterals because that's the head of the deltoid that he said he wants to work the most. This way we get four sets of it. Again, great form. He's gonna go to failure, really making sure that he can work the rear delts only. Next, we go to the side laterals again. Staying with the same weight, challenging himself. 
back up against the machine. And again, I want you to right. notice this form. There's no swinging at all. A lot of people think you got to use tremendous weights, but not in the side lateral movement. You should be using lighter weights and using strict form because he's engaging just the lateral head. He's not using his traps. He's not using his front delts. Third movement, making it a tri set. But again, this is going to become a giant set as you'll see. Again, moving back to the shoulder press machine. It's too narrow. <laughs> no, you're too big. He's too big for the machine. Okay, so again, as you can see, he's using good form. He's not throwing the weight. He's not trying to lift the whole stack. He's trying to muscle the weight to the top, not throw the weight. He's not trying to work his joints. He's working the muscle. By now, he's getting a tremendous pump in the burn, obviously, from hitting rear delt, side delt, and then primarily the anterior delt. But now he's got one more movement in the sequence. Okay, so finally he's going to move to a wide grip upright row, which is going to kind of hit everything. Give him a good final pump. So now in this add-on set, we've added on upright rows and it becomes a giant set to finish with. He's going to go to failure, as you can see. He's not throwing the weight. He's trying to use the side deltoids mostly, but the front deltoids and the rear delts also will come into play. And a, an amazing pump. If Luca turns around, if he can actually move... I'll show you how pumped he is. <laughs> how was wide, that? Wide as a house. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. No comment because he's exhausted. And that's what we wanted. <laughs> okay, so this is a, a unique movement for really, really isolating to the best of your ability the uh, anterior head of the deltoid. So as you can see, he's um, sitting back on an incline bench set at about 60 or so degrees. He's grabbing uh, the bar with an underhand grip. Uh, which brings the elbows in close to the body and he's laying back on the bench and he's doing a low cable front raise uh, because we're using a cable he's able to have a lot of tension all the way through the movement all the way to the top so we're exaggerating the movement and bringing it up over his head uh, gives a really great con contraction at the top uh, again you don't want to use too much weight for this movement because you're it's a very very difficult movement give it a try if you have uh, trouble with the anterior delts so again, this is a, also a great movement to isolate the lateral head of the shoulder and it's, it's, it's unique because it works the, the top half of the movement most strongly as opposed to regular side laterals with dumbbells, which uh, the strength curve in that movement works the bottom half of the movement most strongly. So what you're doing is again sitting on an incline bench uh, uh, to the side of the body. Uh, you could set this bench anywhere between 40 and 60 degrees, you can play with the angle. Uh, you're grabbing the lower uh, the handle from the lower pulley. Uh, and you're aligning your arm so it's right on the side of your body because you want to lift straight up to the side, very, very slight, uh, bend in the elbow, uh, and you want to lift again up uh, very, very high so you get a complete contraction in the shoulder. Focus very, very much on not bringing the traps into the movement, which can happen. So you want to keep your, your neck untense, so you're really lifting with the lateral deltoid, make it a full range of motion, very, very strict motion, great isolation for the lateral deltoid. Okay, so this movement I wanted to uh, throw in for Luca again because he wanted to really, really strongly hit the uh, the posterior deltoid, the rear deltoid. Uh, I really like this one. We do this on a on a seated cable chest press machine. Um, you could also do this on um, any kind of a cable setup, uh, seated down, get a similar movement, but it uh, feels really good on this machine. So what he's doing is. He's doing a single arm um, rear lateral, or basically you can call it a reverse fly. So he's seated, and you can see that he's starting with his hand about the midline of his body, and then he's bringing the arm with a slight bend in the elbow um, in a reverse fly motion, and he's trying to contract the rear delt. He doesn't come back uh, past uh, the you know past his body. If he went back too far, he would start to engage the trap. So he really wants to keep in the rear delt. You'll also notice that his hand, he's not actually grabbing a handle, he's just grabbing the cable itself, uh, right by that little ball in the cable to stabilize the hand. Um, and his hand is flat to the floor. Uh, and this helps to isolate that shoulder a little bit more. But you can also do it with a handle and do it uh, in a general style uh, with, the, with the hand neutral. Uh, so you can give it a try both ways. But this is a really, really great movement for isolating the rear deltoid. A little bit different than using the dumbbells, a little bit different than the machine. So give it a try if you're having a little trouble with the rear deltoid. Big Luca.
How was that, man? It was intense. <laughs> but the pump was great. You made it look easy. I mean, it looked it, hard, it but wasn't. you didn't. No? <laughs> so you, you hide it well? I'm a good actor. <laughs> okay. Remember, he's an you actor. are an actor. <laughs> That's right. You've been doing tons of commercials. so hard, you have no idea. <laughs> was it tough, really? It was very, very tough, yeah. Really? Wow. And it wasn't that the like, crazy amount of weight. Sold, like, yeah, it was intense, yeah. It wasn't a crazy amount of weight either. It's not no. like, you know. Yeah, wow. but it's a different uh, different technique so, so from uh, what I normally do. So yeah. I definitely felt that. Are you going to do it again on your oh, own? I love to. I mean, <laughs> you know, I'm going to take something to do from by yeah. myself for sure. You can just rewatch the video. Sometimes I forget what we yeah, did. So I go back and watch the video. <laughs> okay, that's right. We did. Yeah. I would definitely do that. <laughs> exactly. Well, it's so good to have you back on, on the show again, Thank man. You. It's been so so long i mean it's been over a year yeah hasn't been since before the lockdown and uh yeah, it was a, a tough year for everybody i think you even know. just be able to train it was uh where did you go it was a blessing did, were you able to find somewhere uh, i i've been training since the, the lockdown the first I know. day i mean i never, never stopped uh besides for my surgeries um i was here in the powerhouse yeah. i won mendis in the valley okay another friend of mine uh, um uh, san pedro Nice. Uh, now I've been training at uh, uh, Coast Fitness since yes. uh, September, I think. Yeah, it's a good place. Yeah. yeah. So but Awesome. You made it. We made Bible it. is always finding a way. We almost made it through the, the, the lockdown and the, <laughs> the COVID. There's no way you're going to stop training. <laughs> Iwo, how was that to uh, be re-ran re with Luca today? You know, listen, I, I love Luca. I mean, we, uh, we hit it off the day that we met at Gold's Gym. Um, been close friends ever since. Uh, and we've you know we've trained together on our own sometimes we've had him on the show a bunch of times and yeah. the thing that I love about the thing I love about Luca is that again he's just the kind of guy like yeah he's you know he walks around close to 300 pounds in shape all the time never see him out of shape even though he'll say he's out of shape but I'll laugh at him he's a little mental if he loses like two pounds he goes home and eats a pizza because I'm small right now I'm so I need a pie I need a pie right. so but, but yeah but you know but the thing is, is again he's got no ego it's like he's like he's just is like he's like he absorbs all the knowledge and he He's always taken something from our workouts. It doesn't mean he's going to change his whole style, you know, of what he's been doing with what's comfortable to work for him. But he's like, he'll take an exercise or he'll take a technique and he'll put it into his training. And that's all I ever hoped for anybody who's watching it. If you don't want to adopt the whole style, just take something from yes. it. And that's uh, and that's what he always does. So, yeah. And, and he's just a great, you know, he's... he's his form is always, you know, spot on. He's got great technique. He doesn't try to outlift the world. And you could see, you could be 300 pounds of mass monster without necessarily squatting 800 and benching 500. Um, you know, he does a lot of, um, not that he doesn't do the basic movements. Plus, we've done that. Yeah, but day, he, so. that was his foundation. But now as he's moved on, he knows to get better, he needs to work muscles from different angles and work with different techniques. And that's what he does most of now. So he does a lot of machine work mixed in with the weights. So uh, I love training, Luca. It's great. It's a great time. Also you, thinking about longevity as well. Yeah, I was just going to ask you. Wanna train yeah, you don't have any joint life, issues, any no uh, injuries. Issues so far, yeah, so, wow, nice. So uh, that's, that's great because yes. if you keep training, sometimes you find kids that they're yes. already wear and tear. I mean, at that way, falling apart at yes. 30 years old, man. Yeah, exactly. So, that's awesome. So. Now the big question is, since you're a pro, <laughs> oh no, <laughs> will you be will you be competing as a pro? Because everyone wants to know that. <laughs> We've been talking with Eric for oh, a year, maybe or so. I mean, I don't really know, man. You don't know? I lost the um, the enthusiasm to compete. I mean, I but mean, it was a weird year, to be yeah, fair. Yeah, it was. That's true. I mean, uh, I mean, it might happen. Only if he does first. <laughs> <laughs> we, hey, so it's always oh. the same thing. I've got to do it, then he'll do it. Oh, you better compete then. <laughs> uh, I don't trust him. I'll do it. And I'm like, go ahead, Luca. Yeah, I changed my know. mind. He'll just say, oh, man. Well, you should. You should. It's a lot of work you put in. in. Uh, day in and day out, you never take a break. And he's right. You, you may think you're out of shape, but you're never out of shape. You're always at that but size. But that's what we do. It is our uh, lifestyle. That's what right. that won't change. It doesn't matter if I will compete or not. I mean, I know. I, we we keep training. We keep following diet. I mean, I know that won't change. And not even five, ten years, we, unless we have. Interest. But you just look so good when you get yeah. when you pass pro. I just feel like you kind of. It'd well, be he great looks to see like you. He could walk on stage at any time. You know, yeah. like with, with eight weeks preparation and yeah. I would love to see him do it because it's like I think that he could do really 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 well I think so uh, but it's got you know it's got to be it's got the thing is with competing everybody out it's there mental you have to want to do it yeah you and have to he, be mentally in it yeah. um, but you know what's good about Lucas is that he always and we were just talking about this before off camera is that I said 
no matter what, he's still going to train like he's competing. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He sure. still wants to be the that's best he could He's like Kai Green. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like he's still going to look insane. Yeah. So if he ever got the bug back, it's not like he's going to have to yeah. do anything. He's going to already be like right in the yeah, yeah, So yeah, yeah. he may get the bug back. And I, I'd love to see him do it, but I guess Me I got to do it first. <laughs> for selfish reasons, we wanted we wanted to compete for selfish reasons. We just wanted to see him back on stage. So yeah, well, I definitely yeah. want to see him. But when, regardless, I you know he's he's a monster. He's and his passion for training is Loves the thing it. that's amazing. He's Loves never going to be the kind of guy who's going to be like ah you know I'm sick of weighing 300. I want to weigh 225 now. Be no, he'll want to weigh 310, 315 <laughs> in shape and, and look better than and better. Look yeah, better yeah, yeah. And, He'll look at his body and he'll be like, what do I want to focus on? He's not, he's never satisfied. And that's, he, he, that's just a true, a love for, for the, sport, the sport, a yes. love for training. I love that about yeah, it. You know? Awesome. So. Well, I'm so glad I got to, we, we got to have you back today. And uh, you look great. Thank you so much for making the drive because this is not your home gym. You actually came here for us. <laughs> we appreciate it. And thank you to Dave Fisher's Firehouse for hosting us. Always. Love this place. Great place. Yeah, this is all gosh. new, like this whole, you know, playground. Now there's tires and they have like the... Uh, you know, this wasn't there last time we came, so you know we yeah, appreciate. Yeah, every time we come back and film, something there's like new. new stuff yeah. here. Yeah, it's so, really really cool. Awesome, Luca. Thank you guys for having me. Yes, great. We'll do All it right. again. Yes, <laughs> awesome. Okay, so I just wanted to, you know, go over the add-on sets part of the workout, the beginning part of the workout a little bit because that is a technique that um, I've actually written about for like a bunch of magazines, and um, I work with clients and stuff with it, but I've, I've never did it. I never did it on Be Built by Browser. Uh, so uh, basically, what we're doing with the add-on sets, and again, I'm, I'm, I'm not—it's not something that's you know completely out of space. That's like completely new. It's basically a play on um, supersets, tri sets, giant sets, uh, but it has a, it has a specific uh, method to its madness. So what I do is, is when you're when you're talking about. Um, it's best to use this. I mean, you could use it for any body, any body part for sure. Uh, uh, but when you have something like a, a muscle that has specific heads, uh, like the shoulders, um, I will ask the client, you know, what portion of the shoulder do you need most work on? Or if it's my client, obviously I'll decide it. But so Luca said, you know, my rear delts have been more of a problem than my my lateral or my anterior. So that that we make the the focal point of the add-on sets, um, you know, the movement. So that will always be the first exercise. So as you saw, Luca did, um, you know, rear delt movement first. Uh, then he said to me, if I, he had to pick second, it would be side delts. So then we moved on to the lateral uh, raise second. Uh, then we moved on to the shoulder press and then the upright row. So what you see with the sequences is that because we did, um, we did basically you know, a single movement, then a superset, then a triset, and then a giant set, the rear delts got hit each within each one of those. So it got the most work because that was the movement, that was the area he wanted to focus on. So that's why I put that movement first and made it the base. The side laterals, which was the second portion that he wanted to work on, got three sets, so it got hit three times. So it basically has like a hierarchy of of you know how you want to do it. so there's it's not just throwing together a hodgepodge of movements there's a sequence involved so just to use another body part for example if you're having problems with um, say the upper chest versus the lower chest and of course we can't isolate one from the other but we can we can work specific fibers or, or, or target more motor unit pools in a portion of the muscle so if you wanted to work incline uh, you know the upper chest maybe you would start with an incline um, uh, press first uh, and then maybe the second movement would be an incline fly and then you move to something flat and then you move to something decline or something like that but again it has a hierarchy so you put the whatever section of the muscle you want to hit the most first so these are add-on sets and of course the name is because we're adding on um, exercises each time the total sets within that whole sequence is actually 10 um, so it could be for a whole workout depending if you're a lower volume trainer or you can um, do more after that um, or one other thing you can actually do with that on sets I want to mention is, is that you can also do something which will do a reverse out of it. So if you do, you know, um, single movement, then a superset, triset, giant set, I may go backwards and then drop to a triset, drop to a superset, and then drop to a single set again. So work up and down like a pyramid. So that's another option as well. So I just wanted to explain the technique a little bit more. So if you want to use it yourself, you'd understand it better and you can put it into your own workouts. Awesome. Ah, uh, Merlin, you had a question this week. It's been a, it's been yeah, a minute. It's been, it's been a minute since we've yeah. done Ask Merlin. Uh, so yeah, this was um, 
question that I had a couple of weeks back on my Facebook page, and a uh, pretty simple question, but I figured I'd answer it. Um, it says, um, so on your B-Built show, I see mostly upper chest movement work. Uh, what are your thoughts about um, somebody who wants to create uh, that lower uh, pec line uh, and lower chest work? Oh, is that right? I don't think we do on the upper. I don't oh, really agree, okay. but I, I, think right. that, I think that when I when I talk about chest work, I say that at least two thirds of it should be upper chest work. Yeah, I think because I think most people do um, lack more size in the in the upper chest, the yeah. shelf of the chest. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think it's easier to build the, the lower chest. And again, I don't want before you people out there start going. There's no such thing as upper and lower chest. There is. Um, it's, a, it's a two headed two headed muscle, and and no, you can't isolate one head from the other and just push with the upper pack or just push with the lower pack. But different angles um, do affect different sets of motor unit pools. So you can take that to the bank. But anyway, um, so when it comes to lower chest work, yeah, I do believe that you know um, the lower chest will pretty much take care of itself. I was um, even say if you have a big upper chest, doesn't it go from up to down? I mean, it's like yeah, I mean in a sense, but I but I will say that I have seen some people out there who um, they have a you know pretty evenly built chest, but they don't really have a good separation between the, the lower pec line okay. and the abdominals. Okay. Now some of that quite obviously can be a body fat issue um, because yeah. unless, if your body fat is not you know relatively low decently low I'm not, it doesn't have to be like two percent but i mean you know at least ten percent or lower you may not have that really good carved line under the chest so that's something to consider now if your body fat is decently low and you and you feel that maybe you're lacking under there you know the, the lower pec line so yeah so then you could do some more lower pec work of course the king of all exercises the bench press is going to work on the lower chest especially if you lower the bar um you know around to the nipple or below nipple level um that's going to work the lower chest you know decline work i've never personally done decline work i've probably done two sets of decline work in my whole career because it's really short movement right yeah it's a short movement when you do decline presses um you know you could do decline flies but you could do you could try decline presses with dumbbells barbie you could try decline flies or decline cable flies um, but also regular cable crossovers if you bring the cables down um if you stand pretty upright and you bring the cables down low um, mm. Again, this is a movement that, you know, a lot of movements depends on the angle of push or pull of how you affect the muscle. But if you pull down low and do a very, very standard cable crossover, you'll get that lower pec line. Um, and I think probably the best lower pec builder, if you want to say there is one, would be dips. I was going to say. Yeah, I think yeah. dips is probably the, the king of lower pec Side exercises. Side and low. Yeah. Yeah, I think that it really works that, that you know, the, the lower line, like from the outside yeah. right under. Um, especially if you you know lean forward at just about a 45 degree angle and really focus on pushing with the pecs and not with the triceps um, and, and and lock out and really get that squeeze on like the top. That um, that's an excellent exercise for the lower it's a good pec. finisher. So, right. Yeah, I think it's a great it's a great finishing exercise and and I I I used to do a lot of dips. I have to admit that in my early uh, bodybuilding when I was trying to add size, uh, I did do a lot of heavy weighted dips. I actually probably did just as many dips as I did bench presses in my early days, wow. and I got really strong with them. Like I was able to strap like three forty-five pound plates around my waist and Jesus. do like ten really really good reps. But I but I practiced them um, over and over again, and I really made sure that I used good uh, form. And you want to make sure that when you're doing dips, uh, that you're you're using full range of motion because if you use a short range of motion, you're going to work most of the triceps at the top. So you have to really go down deep and stretch because it's going to be that lower first two-thirds of the movement from stretch toward contraction that you're going to work the pecs. The triceps do more of the locking out. So so really, yeah, you know, any decline movements uh, that you want to add in uh, to your routine, um, if you're special in, specializing on the lower pecs and that's your, you know, for you, that's something that you want to do, you want to put those movements towards the beginning of the routine when you're strongest. Um, so something like maybe um, doing like bench presses, uh, decline flies and then maybe dips would be a great lower pec routine to finish off with maybe cable crossovers. Uh, that would be a great lower pec routine. I can't imagine it. There's not too many people out there who have trouble with the lower pecs. It, it usually is the upper pecs or the inner portion of the chest and not the lower pecs. Uh, if you're having that problem, you may have a unique physique and a u unique uh, you know, um, muscle fiber profile. So yeah, you can give that a try and you can add it, into, add it into a workout. It's just not something that I see very often, which is why I probably don't talk about it a lot. But to answer your question, go ahead, add them in. Awesome.